You're listening to episode number three of the Wise Photographer podcast. You're scrolling along Facebook when you stumble upon another photographer posting photos of their new studio space. It's beautiful. It has hardwood floors, big windows, and high ceilings, an espresso machine, and a fully stocked snack cart. Or maybe you're watching an Instagram story from another photographer who just photographed yet another destination wedding on some sunny island and all of a sudden you're feeling yourself starting to spiral. Why don't you have a new studio yet? Wouldn't it be nice to get paid to travel to tropical islands and photograph weddings instead of being stuck up here in the frozen tundra? You're either throwing yourself a pity party or bashing the other photographer with your inner monologue. It might not be something that other people talk about, but I guarantee that I am not the only one who's had these thoughts flying around my head. Or maybe I am. In that case, I guess this episode is for me to listen to next time. I find myself falling down the comparison envy spiral. Welcome to the Wise Photographer Podcast with your host, Chelsea Wise. Each week, Chelsea is bringing you the best tips and tricks to help you create a joyful, profitable, more purpose-filled photography business. Chelsea is a wife and mom of two who has built a thriving photography business in her tiny hometown in Western North Dakota. Without further ado, here's your host, Chelsea Wise. While social media can be an amazing tool for growing our businesses, connecting with friends and family, and discovering new things, it also gives us a million opportunities to feel like we don't measure up each day. I recently read an article on The Atlantic and I wanna share a quote from it with you today. Social media is a megaphone for achievement and a magnifying glass for insecurities. When we start comparing our insecurities to another person's achievements, it's a recipe for anxiety. While comparison is a basic human instinct, when done right, it can encourage us to improve our lives. But if left unchecked, it can often leave us feeling overwhelmed, stressed out, and anxious. As new business owners and photographers, we can feel this immense pressure to compare our work, our clients, and following counts to everyone around us. While some of it can be healthy to grow as artists, when we start letting our inner mean girl come out, we can start to fall down the comparison spiral. The first thing that we need to do is stop and evaluate why we are feeling the way we are. Sometimes we have skewed reasons behind why we think we should be jealous or envious, when in reality, if we take a second to step back, we might see that we don't really have a reason for these feelings at all, and we're able to just let it go with ease. In just a minute, I'm gonna be sharing some tactical tips for avoiding comparison but I think it's important that we take some time to get to the bottom of it first. Honestly, sometimes it's really a hard thing and if we keep avoiding it and not dealing with it, it's just gonna fester under the surface and rear its ugly head the next time something sneaks through the cracks on your Instagram feed. To help get to the bottom of these feelings as photographers, I want to challenge you to ask yourself some of the following questions. So the first question that we need to ask ourselves when we start comparing ourselves to someone else is why is this bugging me? Often whatever it is that we saw online has very little to do with why we got upset in the first place. Here's an example for you. I'm scrolling through Instagram and I see this super talented senior photographer posting this promotional video that she recently made of a stylized senior shoot. It's showcasing her style closet, a beautiful senior inside a beautiful studio. I actually just let go of the lease on my studio space because I wasn't using it much anymore in the past few years. I was basically paying rent to use it as a storage space now that I was focusing on weddings. It was so hard for me to let go of that space. I felt that somehow I'd failed as a photographer since I wasn't using it anymore. But you know why I wasn't using it? Because no one was getting married inside my tiny windowless studio space. I was only using it to meet up with brides to go over their designs for their wedding albums, which was super efficient, but not the most cost-effective place to hold those meetings. So by seeing this promotional video, it triggered these feelings of failure, which really weren't based in truth. Right now, I am more successful than I was when I had my studio space. I love my work as a wedding photographer. I have more freedom with my schedule now since things are planned so much further in advance. So the next question that we need to ask ourselves when we're confronted with comparison or envy when it comes to photography is, do I actually wanna be doing what this person is doing and all that goes with it? 
In my case, yeah, the fancy style closet and studio with big windows sounds nice, but do I really want to be photographing seniors? In my experience, things were getting canceled at the last minute because of sports, my makeup artist was coming in from over 80 miles away, so trying to get things scheduled was kind of a nightmare and causing me a lot of anxiety. For me, I just hated how hard some of the girls were on themselves after seeing their pictures, and after a while, it started to feel like they were judging me somehow. Granted, I do have four younger sisters and photograph three of their senior pictures, so they were definitely a lot more vocal with me about some of these things than I think the normal situation. So no, I don't need a big studio or a style closet because I don't want to be photographing seniors and it's not what I'm called to do. I mean, I'm capable of doing it, but it's not something that I loved every aspect of. So I have one last question for you to ask yourself, and that is, if this is something that I actually do want to do or achieve, how can I start taking steps to move towards this? So say that I do want to photograph seniors, and I wanted to get my own studio space and style closet and shoot promotional videos. How can I start moving towards those goals? Well, I could go out and price out what a studio space would cost me. Then I could start setting some revenue goals for myself and my business to afford to take the leap into owning or renting a studio space. If it's a promo video itself that's something I want to do, I can start brainstorming my own ideas and set a date to put out a model call. Use what other people are doing as proof of concept and build upon it. Use it as fuel to move you forward and not something to say that there's no room for you at the table. So these are three questions to kind of get to the heart of the problem and help us really evaluate why we're feeling the way we're feeling when we start comparing ourselves or why we might be envious. It definitely takes some time to work through these things, but give yourself some credit each time you stop yourself from going too far down that comparison spiral. While you continue to work on these things, it can be really helpful to avoid the comparison and envy triggers in the meantime, because you're not gonna ask yourself these questions one time and it's all gonna be better. So here are some tactical ways for avoiding the comparison trap. Number one is to start off your day with some gratitude. Go ahead and take out a notebook or a piece of paper and jot down five things that you're grateful for. I absolutely love doing this first thing in the morning so that I can really start my day off with a thankful heart. It doesn't have to be life-changing things that you're writing down. It could be that someone held the door for you or that you really enjoyed a conversation that you had with your kids at the dinner table last night. The point of writing down these little gratitude moments is that you're going to start to look for these moments throughout the day and really start to focus on them. We'll get right back to the podcast, but first, the sponsor for this episode, Trello for Photography. Trello for Photography is an online course that walks you through how to get the most out of Trello to organize your client workflows, keep up with your blogging schedule, and ensure that you never forget what day you're in charge of snacks for the soccer team. No matter if you're a portrait photographer, wedding photographer, offer in-person sales, or a digital only, Trello for Photography has a workflow board for you. Having an amazing workflow process that you can replicate over and over is the key to creating raging fans who are singing your name anytime someone's looking for a photographer. Inside Trello for Photography, you'll gain access to my favorite boards, including boards called the 30,000 foot view, step into my office, and my most used board, my week. The my week board actually is where you're going to plan everything that needs to get done each and every day of the week. It's seriously the only way I'm able to keep up with my business, kids, and the housework. You'll gain access to videos walking you through how to use each and every board. Best of all, you get complete lifetime access to boards and updates. Just copy them to your account and start saving time and actually getting things done. Never question whether or not you ordered that album for that wedding client or spend hours searching for a pin number for a gallery that someone forgot. Best of news, Trello for Photography is just $29. You spend more than that on a single manicure. To find out more and enroll, head over to trelloforphotography.com. That's T-R-E-L-L-O-F-O-R photography.com. All right. Tip number two is to curate your feed. I really debated about whether or not to add this one to the list, 
Like I said before, if we're just avoiding something, it's only going to fester under the surface, but I don't think that we need to torture ourselves while we work our way through those really heart problems. When we're curating our feed, I really want you to be mindful of who you're following and why. Try to really pare down to only those accounts that you find useful or inspirational. We've all seen those travel commercials lately where they're talking about not hate liking someone else's trip pics. Well, don't hate follow someone else's feed either. Take some time this week to go through your Facebook, your Instagram, and even your Twitter and unfollow any accounts that aren't bringing you joy. Go Marie Kondo your feed, guys. All right, on to number three, and that is to focus on your own goals. So what I mean by this is that we need to have clearly defined goals that we are consistently moving towards. If we don't have clearly set goals for our business and for our lives, then it's really easy to fall in the trap of wanting to chase after what everyone else is doing. So what are your goals for your business? What are you wanting to book a certain number of sessions? Or maybe you're planning a rebrand. The one thing that I have found that keeps me really hyper focused on my goals is to keep them front and center. And I mean literally right in front of me. I use the power sheets from the Cultivate What Matters shop. This is not sponsored, but they did just launch their 2020 power sheets at the time of this recording, and you better believe that I have already ordered mine. I got the bloom cover for myself and the pink linen one for my little sister as a high school graduation gift. So Part of the power sheets is what's called their tending list. And this is where you write down and track your monthly, your weekly, and your daily goals. I have used the power sheets now for four years. And I can tell you after what, 48 months that the months that I keep my tending sheet right in front of me in my planner, I accomplish so much more. When we're focused on where we wanna go and what we wanna achieve, we don't waste our time or our brain power comparing what we're doing to what someone else is moving towards. Think about how much time you've wasted daydreaming about someone else's goals when you could actually be moving the needle on your own business and life. When we start focusing on ourselves and where we wanna go, it is so much easier to congratulate others on their success and their achievements since we don't feel like we're competing with them or trying to achieve their goals because we know what we're working towards. If you don't have clearly defined goals, girl, you need to get on it. I definitely recommend checking out the Power Sheets Goal Setting Planner from the Cultivate What Matters shop, which I will definitely be linking in the show notes below. All right, guys, on to number four. And that is to step back for some perspective. God made me take a really big step back when my husband was battling infections after his heart surgery, which you can listen to in episode number one if you haven't already. Basically though, I had to put growing my business on hold for nearly three years while my husband battled infections after three heart valve replacements, all while I was pregnant with our second child. I had a lot of time to sit back and think as we drove the 16 hours each way to Rochester, Minnesota for surgeries and appointments. And my outlook on life and my work shifted so dramatically. My advice to you is to take a step back and remember what's really important in life. I don't think you really need to go through something so life altering to understand this, but you do have to make a conscious decision to actually take that step back and evaluate where you are and what matters to you in the long run. All right, guys, on to number five. Make yourself say something nice. When you hear your inner mean girl coming out, I challenge you to stop and make yourself say three nice things about the person or the situation instead. This one can be hard for sure. I'll be the first to admit that. We can be so conditioned to tear other people down, especially when we're unhappy with where we are and we tend to take it out on other people. Honestly, it doesn't leave us feeling any better. So instead, say three nice things. All right, on to number six. Don't focus on the numbers. It can be so depressing to see your Instagram numbers or your Facebook numbers when you start comparing them to others. Remember, there are so many ways to generate false numbers. Guys, there's comment pods, giveaway loops, bots, fake accounts. It's not a fair or an accurate comparison. 
So instead, ignore the numbers and focus on showing up and serving your audience well. An audience of one is still an audience. All right, guys, just to recap the questions to help you get to the bottom of why you're feeling the way you are. Number one, what about this situation is bugging me? Number two, do I actually want to be doing whatever it is that this person is doing and all that goes with it? If this person is doing something that I do want to do, are there any steps that I can take right now to help me move towards those opportunities? And then the six tactical ways to avoid and combat comparison. Number one, start off each day with a thankful heart. Number two, curate your feed and don't hate follow. Number three, focus on your own clearly defined goals and keep them front and center. Number four, take a step back and remember what's important in life. Number five, say something nice. And number six, don't focus on the number games. There you have it, friends. I hope that you found this episode extremely helpful. I would love to connect with you all online. You can find me on Instagram over at Chelsea Wise. That's C-H-E-L-S-Y-W-E-I-S-Z. I'll also be linking it in the show notes below. We'll be releasing new episodes every Wednesday, so make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss an episode. If you enjoyed these first few podcasts, it would mean so much for me if you can leave a rating and a review. It's really what's going to help us be found by more busy photographers and mamas like yourself. If you have any topics that you'd like for us to cover, you can visit our website and fill out our contact form. Also, if you're interested in being a guest on our show, please reach out. We have such an amazing lineup of guests that will be joining us over the next few months, and we would love to chat with you as well. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I will see you in the next episode. Bye. Thanks for listening to the Wise Photographer Podcast. Dive into the show's notes for this episode and all past episodes at www.thewisephotographer.com. If you love the show, share it with a friend. Thanks for tuning in, you wise photographer, you.